We're going to talk about inequality and we've been joined by Kobna Yeboa Otri, who is the country director of Christian Aid. Welcome to the studios. Thanks very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Now let's move straight to the discussion. Anytime we mention about inequality, everybody's minds go straight to the difference between, you know, a man and a woman and how the uh, women are always in the minority. But it goes beyond that. Doesn't it? Definitely it does. I mean, when you look at the whole SDG um, goal 10, it's looking at inequality quite broadly, um, although there's a specific goal on gender as well. And what it does is that it tries to unpack it and looks at the element of income inequality and how the economic systems and social protection mechanisms that exist could actually avert that. So yes, you're right. It's not just about the gender inequality. Um, we're also looking at other forms of inequalities with respect to um, persons with disabilities. You're looking at income inequality. You're looking at unequal access to um, economic opportunities um, in terms of education, in terms of health. Mm. So it's quite encompassing um, and quite broadly. Now, according to the State of the World's Population Report, inequality in Ghana increased by 1% in the last seven years. What do you think? What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that we're improving uh, from that? Do you think that it is declining? What do you think? Interestingly, um, inequality is rather on the ascendancy. Um, I, I mean, you make reference to one of the statistics, but if you also make reference to the Ghana Living Standards Survey, which was released just um, a couple of, um, of year, months ago, years ago, you, you, you realize that whereas poverty was declining, inequality was actually on the rise. Mm. And that tells us that we need to relook at the kind of economic options, economic policy options that we have pursued and how we have been deliberate in targeting and deliberate in ensuring that we have a clear understanding of where the disparity exists mm -hmm. and how we are putting in place the right policies, the right mechanisms, targeting the right areas, especially urban versus rural. Um, you make reference to the gender element, you make reference to the young and the old. So these dynamics have to underpin the kind of economic policies and choices we make. Um, and so that we are quite deliberate in targeting um, and addressing them. Let's go straight to the gender inequality. Mm which is of interest to many people yeah. out there. It so happens that uh, women are more likely to be poorer and have fewer assets than men. And here in Ghana, only 6% women are among the richest people. What do you think uh, is putting together to give us that number? Why do you think women are in that position? Um, unfortunately, uh, this is really sort of structural. Mm. Um, in nature, and when I say it's structural, it's really embedded in the the the, the social fabric. Right. So, for instance, take it from the socialization processes. You talk about six percent um, becoming the wealthy people, but the question is, how many of the, the the women currently, women compared to men, how many of them have the same access to job opportunities? How many of them have the same access to? I mean, when you look at the ladder even the hierarchy within the job placement and within the, the, the workplace. How many women compared to men are actually in the boardroom conversations? Exactly. Bring it back to the, to the, to the local level. How mm. many of them have access to land? How many of them have access to education? I mean, mm. if you look at the press statement that we released yesterday, we make reference to a community where for 25 years, I mean, no single um, female has completed GHS and this mm -hmm, is a basic mm -hmm, education. Mm -hmm. So if these forms of um, inequality are already embedded within our social fabric, then it in a way also affects the kind of economic policies that we make. So I think what we need to do as a country, right. one, we've been talking about the affirmative action bill, mm -hmm, for instance, mm -hmm. and it's taking forever. It hasn't been passed yet. Um, we're looking at the representation within the political system, 
we still have it skewed towards men. We have more men represented than women. Right. We come back to the local system. So we need affirmative action bill. We need to really make it, turn it into law and make it work. We need to be deliberate in targeting in ensuring that we're giving level playing ground, but have that consciousness of the fact that women are relatively compared to men um, disadvantaged and so we are more conscious right. in giving them equal opportunities. Now you are championing the fight against inequality. You are, are, are part of the front runners when it comes to this one in particular and you are trying to accumulate uh, thousands of signatures to take to the Ministry of Gender and Social Protection. Tell us more about that. Okay, so I mean, I uh, probably will start off even in looking at um, the allocations to the ministry. Right. And again, it comes back to the earlier question you asked. If you look at one of the press releases we put out as a platform on the budget allocation, it's the, the amount of funds available to the ministry to actually focus on actual programs um, beyond LEAP and others which have some allocations mm. is quite limited. And so beyond our support to the ministry, what we're also saying is that we want to see the ministry in action. Um, we want to see the ministry in action. So we are putting together petitions. Um, we, if if, if, if um, people go to our Twitter page, CSO platform on the SDGs, we're already taking a number of signatures and we How are calling- How many have you gotten so far? Um, I may have to check because they keep coming in every now and then. But what we are calling the ministry is we are calling the ministry to action. That right. We want to see a lot more proactiveness mm -hmm. from them. We want to see a lot more action and responsiveness um, where we don't want to see children um, being married off because they are they, they are girls being married off when they should be in school. We want to see that um, the issues of persons with disability mm -hmm. are actually taken into account. But more importantly also, we, in a broader sense, we right. are calling on the government to look at the tax policies, to look at the labor laws that exist, to look at um, the, the, the way the economic system, the economic policies and choices are pursued in a way that offer equal and equitable opportunity to the underserved and the poor in Ghana. Absolutely. You were talking about today being the um, World Social Media Day for the um, Christian Aid, or well, it's actually the the SD, the whole equality fight. So mm -hmm. the, the 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 platform, the SDGs, the civil society platform on SDGs in Ghana. Mm -hmm is working together with a number of organizations, Oxfam, um, Send Ghana, and many other partners in this fight, basically to say that this week, it's, it's a global week of action on inequality. So it's a global campaign that is happening. And the platform is actually championing that. So I'm here as, part, as a co-convener of the platform 10. And what we are basically doing is that we are asking everybody, every citizen, um, to, to, to begin to make their voices heard mm. on the issues of inequality. Um, we don't need to normalize the inequality that exists. I think that is where we seem to be getting to where... Um, this morning I was watching a New Day, right. um, I think one of the schools where they're living in a very dilapidated structures. Mm. And it reminded me of my own where at some point I was, live, I was going to school and attached. Mm. You know, we had to go and cut palm fronts. Um, to, to sort of make to our own rules. To be comfortable. But we, we don't need to normalize that. We need to challenge it and to understand that mm. there are better options. Out there. It is important for the government to ensure that it is providing schools. We don't want to sc see schools under a tree. And so we want to see more investment in education because it provides a springboard and opportunity for people to, to, to access economic opportunities, to have a dignified life. We want to see that the education is not just about the enrollment, but the quality. So so this free school, um, the free SHS is good, but we want to see quality education. We want to see that the product from this educational system um, are such that they can they can make meaningful decisions. They can make meaningful contribution to um, the, the the Ghanaian system. Before we wrap up, kindly tell people how they can sign the signatures that you are hoping to take to the Gender Ministry uh, soon. How do people get that? 
So we want to encourage people to visit our Facebook site, um, the CSO platform mm -hmm. on SDGs. Um, you visit the site, the link is available for you to access that and to participate, um, to sign on and to call the ministry and the government as a machinery to action to say we want to see a lot more responsiveness and action in addressing inequality. Um, this week also we have a number of actions. Um, on Thursday we have a street march and so we're encouraging as many people as possible to join us in that. We will share the, the details of that on our platforms mm. um, for people to know the convening point and how they can join us in those actions. On Friday, there's a football match. We call it a, in, the Equality Football Fund, mm -hmm. um, where we are bringing together diverse people, persons with disabilities, um, the platform members as well, to basically engage in dialogue. And like you asked earlier, we're looking at it, the issues of inequality broadly, broadly and to say that for persons with disability, um, they are the physical or the forms of disability we see is not inability. Mm -hmm. They still have the capacity to contribute economically. And so we as a country should create the level playing ground and opportunities for them to, to access that. So everybody is supposed to be included. Everybody is supposed to be included. Mm. And we are saying that we should not normalize inequality. Mm. We should not just accept it. Um, and that's the way it is. That's, that's the way, that's way we been, have seen it and nothing is going you know, to change. So it can more, change if we call the government to action. If if we stand up to say enough is enough, we are not happy about the fact that our children are sitting under trees. We are not happy about the fact that um, basic um, service like sanitation, I can't access that. Mm. Can you believe that people have more mobile phones than toilets and uh, facilities in Ghana? Even sanitary parks. How, in, why should in, that be the some, case? You know, communities. Why should that be the it case? It is very sad. You know, so I think this is what we are basically calling the action we are calling Thank for. Thank you very much for your time. Komna Yeboa Autre is a country uh, director, Christian Aid, and he's just calling on government to put policies to improve the fight against inequality. He says, don't normalize it. It is not normal for children to go to school under trees or for girls not to access health care or sanitation with, in whichever area they find themselves in. And I approve that message as well.